Good evening, this is Weather United with a tropical update on Invest 91L. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone and making decisions. Please consult the National Hurricane Center for the latest information for where you're at. So taking a look at our latest true color satellite imagery on Invest 91L in the southern Windward Islands at this time, and we can see that the system still remains somewhat disorganized. And I'm not talking about deep convection here. I'm talking about the lack of tropical storm force or tropical depression storm force winds surrounding the entire system, which in other words, the system is not closed just yet yet. We have very strong screaming winds out of the easterly direction over the central windward islands and the southern islands there with a huge, huge arcing band, which indicates that big, deep convection has um, basically imploded. It collapsed, and we're seeing a lot of that outflow boundary going on. And also the fact that, again, this is not closed, and we have a little bit of that shear coming in out of the northwesterly direction at about 15 to 20 knots. You can also see the the dry air and some of the shear being entrained into the system as we can see by these low level filament type clouds the flow coming in out of the northerly direction. And so this is imparting again that northerly shear that we're seeing and so see some of these darker gray colors just to the north. That's also a little bit of the dry air that is still being impacting on the system here. And so that's why we're seeing a lot of this burstiness. We're not seeing much organization with the deep convection that we really need for a tropical depression to form. And instead, this is really just blobbier. It, it storms blow up, they collapse, more storms blow up, and then they collapse because of the environment that the system currently is in. Therefore, the National Hurricane Center still gives us a 60% chance of tropical formation in the next couple of days. So nothing has changed since last night with an 80% chance of tropical formation in the next five days. By the way, even so, the chances are rather on the medium to high side. This is still expected to bring lots of rain, wind, and um, some high surf in some of the areas and some squally weather. So just keep that in mind if you're on the ABC Islands, just um, right along the coast of Venezuela. This is still going to bring impacts to your area, even so it's not a tropical depression or a tropical storm all right even the organization as far as clouds and the outflow goes we could even argue it's a tropical depression but again it doesn't meet the definition at the surface for one by the way gale force winds are anticipated on this system as this moves further to the west at about 10 to 15 miles an hour so the question is what is the gfs and the european model doing with 91l well some pretty crazy scenarios that we have been looking at the last few runs on tropical tidbits, including Justin G. We were looking at that thing last night. It was going to be a major hurricane. Now, probably nothing too significant. It just depends, and there's a lot of uncertainty that remains. So going forward here, we can see where our system is there. Moderate to heavy rainfall. You can bet on gale force winds with this one. Really not much in the way of tropical depression or tropical storm force winds, but nevertheless, it's going to be windy, there's going to be rain, and there's going to be some squally weather. In 60 hours, so by the time we go into, say, Friday night into early Saturday morning, October the 8th, we can see there is our low pressure system there at 999 millibars, the three nines we call it. But again, the system is still, it's trying to get better organized, but it you know, it just moved right off the land here. So we are going to have to keep an eye on how the model trends go. If this is even further south, maybe it struggles a little bit more versus if it's further north where it may be able to develop a little bit more quicker and better. But nevertheless, that's where the system is in relation to a deep layer ridge that I will show you here in the 500 millibar upper level wind chart here in just a second. And so in about four days, there it is, a tropical storm still on the GFS model, the US GFS, the American model, showing at 986 millibars with moderate to heavy rainfall. It manages to deepen to a low-grade hurricane with air pressure down to 974 with moderate to heavy rainfall. Boy, this would be really bad news if you're, say, in the Honduras area near Central America, talking a lot about flooding, wind, rain, storm surge, possible coastal flooding, and high surf. 
Yep, there will be impacts. It doesn't matter if it's not hitting the U.S. It is hitting somewhere. And yes, my service of production is down here. So if this hits, say, in the Venezuela area or somewhere in the Central America area, I do cover that. And I might even do a little bit of a live stream. I'll have to see on my resources for that because, again, my job is to make sure you are prepared for the weather. So by the time we go down the road here, I'm not going very far out, probably into Tuesday morning. We can see it gets close to the Yucatan Peninsula as a very weak tropical storm, or if that even a tropical depression. I do not see this thing becoming very strong at all. Just because of where it's at, there's a lot of land interaction. We got a little bit of sheer and dry air to contend with. So there's going to be some inhibitors, at least through the next couple of days, to prevent this from strengthening very substantially. So on the 500 millibar GFS model, we can see what the primary steering future is, is the extension of this 500 millibar deep layer ridge to the north. This is a topographical map showing you the atmosphere. Instead of just looking at mountains and ridges or valleys, we're using this and extrapolating it as in geo potential height or uh, yeah, geopotential height or geometric height in decameters. And so the higher the, uh, the contours here, the stronger the ridge is. And then usually the further south and the faster this system is going to move. So we can see the evolution going over the next uh, three days that the system is right here as this also ridge builds to the west. You can see the 588 decameter high really building over the Gulf of Mexico. So there's no chance for this to go north. So if there's any questions in the comment section, is this gonna impact Florida? Is this going to impact Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, or Texas? Or for Pete's sakes, even into northeastern Mexico along the Gulf Coast, the answer is no. It's not going to head in that direction. There is no way it's going to do that because we have this ridge that extends pretty far to the west over the Gulf of Mexico. So by day five, we can see where the system actually is right in here in the um, kind of in the Honduras area. But again, we got this ridge that is fairly strong still on the GFS model. We can see though, too, that the ridge is also sampled stronger in some models. So you can see 591 there, uh, 591. Um, literally, this is, what model run is this? Okay, so this is October the 4th. So just literally yesterday evening, uh, we had a ridge much stronger in the Gulf of Mexico. So a lot can change here in the positioning of where this high is, but it won't matter very much here because the ridge is strong. There's no way this is getting into the Gulf of Mexico. So now, as far as the European model goes, where is this going to be headed? Well, the European model has a very similar scenario. In fact, it doesn't develop the system hardly at all. 1,009 millibars in 60 hours. I mean, European models have been pretty consistently showing that this system is not going to develop very much at all. In fact, if it develops, it might become a low grade tropical storm, maybe 40 mile an hour winds at the very most. I don't think this is going to become anything substantial, which is good. Even so, you might hear people say, oh, this is going to become a category three, David. You don't see the atmosphere like I do. It's going to become a major hurricane. I trust me, David. I know it's going to become a major hurricane. We don't know, folks. I, you, I mean, you, you try to uh, hype this up. You try to make this a bigger deal than it really is. Again, you know, you got to look at where it's at. If it's over Venezuela, if it's interacting with land, I mean, if it comes off of Venezuela over here and it goes this way, that's not very much land. But also, if the atmosphere is favorable enough, it could still become a tropical storm. I think we're going to get a tropical depression out of this, I'm sure. But it's a matter of when and where is it going to happen. But right now, predicting a hurricane is very, very, very sketchy. And it's our spaghetti plot does show that there is still some uncertainty that remains in the forecast in the next four to five days. As you can see here, it could still miss uh, Nicaragua as well as Honduras in about four to five days versus much of the guidance still aims this towards Nicaragua and Honduras in about four to five days. 
But of course, that all depends on the initialization. Where this is exactly located will really mean a lot of things because if this initializes a little further north or a little further south, it could still make the difference. But right now as it stands, it looks like Aruba, portions of Venezuela are still going to get impacted by strong winds, heavy rainfall, and maybe some minor coastal flooding, freshwater flooding, as well as some high surf. As far as the intensity forecast goes, we can see that a lot of the models still indicate that this is going to reach category one to category two status, but I am still disagreeing with much of the models here, and my intensity forecast still calls this to only be a tropical storm with winds up to about 40 miles an hour in about four to five days. I mean, I'm really staying on the low end versus a lot of these models that still indicate a strong tropical storm, a category one or a category two hurricane in about three to five days. So a lot can change, but just keep that in mind that even so my forecast is very conservative, please take it with a grain of salt. As again, we really got to watch this very closely. If it, stands, if it spends more time over water, it has a chance to get stronger than say if it's over land more of the time. But first of all, this has to got to get better organized before we can make accurate predictions of what's going to happen in about three to five days. Also, if you feel like you want to be part of the weather community, feel free to join the Weather United Discord server today. There is a link in the description below this video. That's where you get to know me and know my staff and other people. If you found this weather information very helpful, make sure you smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future updates. But anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace.